Hey, what's up, chitheads? Welcome back to the channel. Today is the day we take the Talaria Sting MX-5 on its maiden voyage. Now, I just got this bike yesterday. I put everything together. I clipped the speed limiter. I've done everything I need to do to get this thing out on the road. So we're going to be taking it to work. But, uh, you know, guys, that's enough small talk. What do you say we get right on the bike and get going? Come on, let's go. I wanted to point out guys before you take your bike on your first ride you need to undo this clamp here that is the vent for your gearbox so make sure this is undone all right guys we're finally ready to get riding i'm on the bike press our start button here and uh, i'm going to start off in eco mode just to get the hang of everything no reason to rush right into a uh, high power mode oh yeah i can already tell suspension feels nice and soft Throttle mapping and uh, eco, very, very predictable as well. And it looks like it's limited at 28, 29 miles an hour. Eco mode seems nice to get you used to riding the bike. The initial, uh, this seat feels pretty comfortable so far. Yeah. So there's eco mode. Let's go ahead and switch it into sport mode here. better but it's still not crazy it's not giving us all the beans yet it doesn't feel like it wants to buck me off the bike that's for sure let's see what sport mode feels like from a dead stop though oh yeah it feels nice and torquey i definitely need to adjust my brake handles okay we are in hyper performance mode Feels pretty quick. Doing uh, 49, 50, 52, 54, 55, 56, 57. We're going downhill a little bit right here. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna get 59, 60. Okay. Honestly, uh, feels fast for sure but uh the e-ride feels more like it wants to buck you off you feel like that uh, immediate torque blast on the e-ride more so than you do on this bike this is a more smooth power delivery just from the seat of the pants feeling it's hard to say i don't know if it's the throttle mapping or what but i'd have to say the e-ride to me feels uh, a bit faster at least a more torquey but this bike is no slouch, uh, don't get it twisted. Keep in mind guys, you've seen me ride. I have what, about one and a half miles on the odometer. It feels like the throttle pull compared to the E-Ride is a longer pull. Like you have to move the throttle further. Let's try this regenerative braking. I don't know if the regenerative braking on this bike is gonna work until you're like on the e-ride the regenerative brakes don't work until you're under 90 percent uh, as of right now this knob's not doing anything so we'll have to try that a little bit later as the battery wears down yeah honestly this feels nice this feels more predictable and uh less likely to buck you off than the e-ride pro so i have to tell you man you get on the e-ride and right away uh, that thing just you know eco mode's fine but you still feel that mountain of torque immediately this one, you feel the power, but it's not like, not right there, just kicking you right in the pants. This is comfortable, this feels nice. The uh, suspension on this feels much more floaty and uh, it's not making noises. It's not making that, you know, the, the suspension on the E-Ride just makes noise. It works, but this feels much more plush to me. This feels like a nicer suspension. Keep in mind, guys, I'm not Jeremy McGrath. I'm not going to be doing anything to uh, put the suspension on either of these bikes to its limit. Because I feel like kind of most people that get these bikes will. I'm not a willy guy. I just want to show that, you know, I'm a 44-year-old guy. I just like getting on these bikes and adventuring. Me and my friend, he has a Tilaria Sting MX-4. We get out and ride all over the place and just uh, adventure and check things out. So I don't need the fastest bike in the world. I just want something reliable and uh, fun to ride. So we're gonna be taking this little shortcut on the way into work. And uh, 
I switched to Shinko 244s on the other bike and I've noticed that these CST tires seem to be better in uh, situations like this. Better in gravel and loose dirt. But it's actually kind of funny looking at these CST tires, especially the front one. They're so dinky. It's like a little mountain bike tire. Yeah, yeah I really like the suspension so far. And keep in mind, I haven't tuned it in at all, except turning up the preload a little bit on the front shock. Oh, it's wet. I don't want to get my brand new dirt bike dirty. You know, depending on which week you come through here, there'll be tents and sometimes there aren't. Right now, it doesn't look too bad. It actually looks like they just cleaned up this field. Oh God, there was a bunch of burned out cars and other stuff through here. It's all gone now. It's election year, so they're all cleaning up all the problems now. I have to say, the this feels quieter than the E-Ride. I mean, you still hear the chain noise, but it's not quite as loud as the other bike. It's not quiet by any means. People will definitely hear you coming up on this. Climbing this hill, these things, all these e-motors have no problem at all climbing hills. The amount of torque and the gear ratios, it just, they'll go up anything. I've noticed on the e-ride, I have no problem going up the steepest hills possible in eco mode. It's never been an issue. Looking now, wow, we are already showing 87% on the battery. Uh, let me see if I see the odometer here. Yeah, three miles, we're at 87%, so. I'm interested to do a uh, range test on this as well. I'll be doing that probably over this weekend, depending if I have time. These brakes feel absurd. These brakes whoops, seem like they far outseed the uh, gripping ability of these tires. Yeah, this bike is quick. This bike is quick for sure. Guys, does your commute to work look like this? That's half the fun of all these uh, electric vehicles is e-bikes or e-motos or whatever. I just find so many different ways to get around town. You don't have to stick on just a boring old road. You can go wherever you want. Oh yeah. It is cooking right along here. Depending on what area you live in, you know, you're going to be able to get away with riding these more than others. This area I'm in, uh, they have so many more problems than people riding their e-motos around that we're pretty low on the priority list. They're not going to mess with you here unless you're being crazy and zipping and zagging through traffic and holding up traffic and running red lights. Uh, but keep in mind guys, if you get one of these, it's going to greatly depend on where you live, which is how far, with how much you can actually ride these around. Just cruising along right now, 49 miles an hour, no problem at all. I really think the that 15 amp charger this thing comes with it, that's such a highlight. I mean, three hours to fully charge. I have a background in a lot of e-bikes, and the e-bike chargers, you know, you were talking five hours minimum, five hours up to 10 hours on some of these bikes. So being able to fully charge your bike in three hours is very nice. And you know, a lot of the times you're not gonna ride your, you know, run your battery all the way down. You're gonna ride around for a bit, maybe take a lunch break. You plug this thing in just for an hour, you're gonna get a huge amount of range back. I think that's one of the most awesome things so far. Makes me wonder how long it's gonna be till we have these bikes that can recharge in like 20 minutes or so. Yeah, I don't know if it's the extra weight or what, but this bike definitely feels less jumpy than the e-ride. It feels nice and smooth with the power delivery. Yeah, this bike feels nice. There's like a more linear progression on the throttle as well. The e-ride gives you initial huge amount of torque and then it kind of flattens out to me after like 30 to 40 miles an hour. It levels off and goes up to your max speed. 
But so far, it seems like this one kind of gives you a more level progression. We're coming up to this super steep hill here, and I'm gonna try and go up in an eco mode, which it should have absolutely no problem doing. Yeah. I'm just babying the throttle. I'm not even trying to accelerate. This hill is really steep. A lot of the e-bikes I have will not go up this hill. This is just no problem whatsoever. No problem at all. You could accelerate up that hill. Hey, we're back on the road. Oh yeah, now the regenerative braking button works. It works really well. Yeah, I definitely, I will be using this quite a bit. I would be interested to see like how much watts it's putting back into the system. So that'd be kind of cool if you press it and you can see how many, how much you're regenerating. But this is going to be nice for going down hills and it's a uh, linear here. So it's not just on or off. You can throttle it, you know, depending on how much you want to slow down, which is great for prolonged uh, descents. Oh yeah, that's cool. I really like that. That, uh, if you hit it all the way, it slows you down pretty significantly. That's nice. You know, it's nice that these things can do 60. I would never want to do 60 miles an hour off-road. As a matter of fact, most of the time we're off-road, we're just putting along at like 15 miles an hour, which I feel like when they give you the range estimates on these bikes and they say 70 miles at 15, I actually feel like that's a usable range because once you're riding around off-road, you know, you're not, you're not darting around at full speed. The only time I'm going super fast on these is usually on the road. You go from one trail from the next and you want to hit the road for a bit and then use that power and the speed, it comes in handy. This bike is actually smaller than some of the e-bikes I have, which is crazy. It's crazy because the amount of power these things have compared to uh, those bikes, it's like it's not even comparable. You're talking... 2000 watt max on some of those this is 13.4 kilowatt max that's insane so far this i'm really liking this bike it's smooth the suspension feels great yeah it's a nice bike i do notice it feels a little more twitchy with the steering and then the other bike does you know i got my first emoto earlier this year around april and it kind of made me sad in a way because you know i just realized like I've had the means to buy an Emoto for years now and I just haven't done it because, you know, let's face it, we're adults and you kind of lose touch with these sorts of things. But when I got it and I was riding around, I was like, man, why didn't I get a dirt bike earlier in my life at some point? It's just so fun. Oh, let's use our regenerative braking, guys. Oh yeah. That's cool. That is cool. So yeah, I was just like kind of sad in a way. I was like, man, I just wish when I was younger, I wish more of me and my friends had these things. Yeah. I do have to say that uh, it feels like the tuning on this throttle is definitely not giving you 100% of the power immediately. It's a more of a linear curve. But that E-Ride feels like it just, if you just hammer that throttle, it's gonna wanna pull the front end up immediately. That could be because it's 20 pounds lighter, or it could be because the, uh, the throttle mapping. I don't really know. But either way, I'm not complaining. This feels nice. I'm glad Hyper Performance isn't some time-sensitive mode like Turbo Mode was on the E-Ride earlier. You just put it in Hyper Performance and leave it there. And if you do change the regenerative braking settings on the side here, it will just by default give you more regenerative braking whenever you're not on the throttle. Which to me, I don't want that there unless I'm planning on using it. I've heard people do range tests with regenerative braking on the whole time and they get worse range because you end up slowing yourself down too much and then you have to use your throttle to speed back up, therefore kind of negating the whole point of the regenerative braking. So I like the on-demand regenerative braking approach uh, 10 times better. Oh yeah, this thing rips. You know, that's one side effect of riding my e-bikes to the gym is uh, sometimes I'm riding around having so much fun, I just don't want to go to the gym. Oh, the, let's do these speed bump tests. Oh yeah, it just goes right over these, no problem. 
now people at the gym will kind of look at me funny when I ride my bicycle here, my e-bike. I think they think I have a DUI or something. When I show up on this, on the e-motos, I think they're like, wow, this is quite possibly the coolest man in the entire world. You know, one thing I also like to demonstrate on these bikes, like, can you lock it up? Because you're obviously gonna be riding these things all over the place, so let's see. I know I can lock my E-Ride Pro up. And let's hope I can lock this bike up because otherwise I just wasted a trip here. On these E-Motos, I have to take the battery out. And what I do is I bring the battery in with me. Now guys, I have two locks here I've recently upgraded. I have the Hiplock DX1000. Now this is grinder, angle grinder proof. This is one bad mamma jamma. This thing is gonna take multiple grinder wheels and you have to cut through both sides, so. You guys invest a lot of money in your bikes. You need to invest a lot of money into your locks. So this one is 350, which I just got this one last week. And then I have the Hiplock D1000, pretty much the same exact lock, except significantly smaller. The DX1000 just came out. So sometimes you have to get a bit creative to get this D1000 to fit, but so far I've been able to lock every bike I have with it. Okay, it's the Hiplock DX1000 in front. And what I do is I run this cable from the lock through the front wheel because you're going to make it absolutely inconvenient as possible for them to steal your bike. Normal locks can an uh, angle grinder can get through these things in like seconds. Not this one. So there we go. We have our main frame locked up and the front wheel. You know D1000 is not doing a whole hell of a lot but it's going through your chain and the rear wheel and we have the DX1000 going through the frame and locking the front wheel. This bike is not going anywhere and if somebody wants to steal it they're going to be out here for a good 25 minutes and they're going to need five or six malt grinder wheels so they're not getting it but anyways guys i gotta get inside i'm way behind schedule and i'll catch up with you in just a minute all right guys we got the initial ride in the books and some of the first things i tell you about this bike that i really like first off these brakes are absurd these brakes are really strong this bike feels fast. The throttle mapping is very linear. And one thing I did notice though, is why I said I thought the E-Rike felt torquier is because I feel like on this bike, you have to really give it all the throttle when you want full power. But on the E-Ride, it's, I don't know. This one, it just seems like all the throttle is usable. Whereas the E-Ride has a more aggressive initial grip. The suspension on this is buttery smooth. The suspension feels really nice. All in all, it's just a really nice ride. But one thing I do want to point out is my ride total today was 14 miles and we're down at 53 percent battery so i'm anticipating this bike is not going to get the best range there is three modes on here eco sport and hyper performance i found myself pretty much just using eco or hyper sport but uh you know maybe as i ride more i will use the uh, sport mode more i really liked the regenerative braking lever there that's really comes in handy and finally the thing i really like about this bike is the fact that yes the battery may discharge super fast but you can also recharge it super fast with that 15 amp charger but guys i'll be doing more riding on this in the future obviously that was my initial ride and so far i really like this bike but anyways guys thanks for watching the video don't forget to like comment share subscribe and i will catch you in the next one peace i almost forgot guys i gotta give it the stair test when you live on the second story of a building. It's fun. So keep in mind guys, if you have to do this, be prepared. Yeah, that sucks.